Uh, Jackson Arnold had some things to say about the offense as well. We'll discuss that coming up next here on Locked On Sooners. You are Locked On Sooners, your daily podcast on the Oklahoma Sooners. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Well, that's something we got to talk about a little bit there. Oklahoma, the shift from a two and a half point underdog to now being a favorite. Jay, what do you make of that as you look at that line? Yeah, the transition of that line tells me that it all but confirms that Missouri is going to have some injury issues going into this game. We know that Brady Cook came out against Alabama, and it's funny because the social media was pointing out, they're like, yeah, I think he broke his hand. I'm like, what? He broke his hand. Kind of look at the play like, oh, it does look like he may have broken something. So if that's the case, that's a very good chance that Oklahoma, that's probably why the line shifted itself. It's the injuries. Plus, they're starting uh, running back. Uh, Noel is looks like he's hurt as well. So Missouri's kind of going through the, the ringer right now with a whole bunch of injuries that's uh, kind of unfortunate that it populated at this time of the season. But this is also the time of the year when injuries start to hit people. It's, it's the time of the year when you start to deal with a lot more of these and Kind of, it, it sucks. Um, you, you lose Brady Cook and Nate Noel, but we'll we'll see what it looks like uh, on Saturday when Oklahoma comes to town. And shockingly, Oklahoma's actually getting a little bit healthier. Yeah, as I know, the right? Season rolls on it because we had all of our injuries, our big injuries in the first half of the season. Now it's like everything's coming back for Oklahoma. Jackson Arnold let it slip that maybe a couple guys will be back for the Sooners. Speaking with the media last night after practice. He said, I feel like on the field, you have two explosive guys coming back that are key pieces to our offense. Speaking of Deion Brooks, Jalil Farouk, outside of that, it almost opens up your running game too because you've got DBs focusing on backers, focusing on Jalil and Deion. I mean, he was pretty emphatic. Those guys are going to be back this weekend. So we'll say this. The last time that Jackson Arnold said that. He said that about Nick Anderson, and Nick Anderson ended up on the field. Unfortunately, he got hurt again, but Nick Anderson was on the field that game. So knock on wood that it appears that we're going to get both of them. The first injury report comes down uh, Wednesday night. So it'll be sometime in the evening. We'll get, we'll actually, well, which is later on tonight. Now think about it. Uh, we'll find out. So we'll be able to talk about that sometime later this week when the first couple of injury reports drop. But if the injury report drops and it shows on that report that they are probable, I expect them to play. Now, if this says questionable for either one of them, I'm out. I mean, that's, that's basically my indicator that, yeah, they, they, they don't think that they're going to be able to get themselves fully recovered. But Brent Venables even talked about it. He said that they're, that Farouk is definitely working really hard and hopes to make a really quick impact and that both of them have gone through practices. I think he even mentioned that uh, Andrew Anthony has been going through some light practice, uh, light practice, non-contact stuff right now. So you got three wide receivers that are looking to try to make a comeback within the next three games. And hopefully if we get Burks and Farouk back early, that's definitely a safety net for Jackson Arnold because you could tell he really likes Farouk. He would throw it to him all the time. And, I mean, when you get this 60-something yarder in the first game of the season, you're like, okay, we see the connection. It's coming back. And then you find out he broke his foot and he's gone. And you're like, uh-oh, that's no bueno. But the good thing is you get both of those back, that's going to help a lot on the offensive side. No, it helps a ton. It, it gives you two guys that can win in their route, and it gives you two guys that will block in the run game. It, yep. it gives you two guys that defenses have to account for. For some of the good things that Brennan Thompson and J.J. Hester have done this year, or Jacob Jordan, they're not guys that you have to, you know, give extra help on defense to cover. They're not guys that you have to be overly concerned about. Jalil Farouk and Deion Burks have legit college football production. I mean, it it may not be thousand yard receiving seasons, but they are dynamic weapons in the passing game that can hurt you if you're not fully aware of where they're at. And so I think getting those two guys back, it's going to help open things up for the offense. It's going to give Jackson Arnold guys that he trusts maybe a little bit more to catch the football because they're, they're a little bit more sure-handed than, than yep. what we have and gives them guys that are going to be open when they're supposed to be open. So I, I'm looking forward to that. Uh, Jackson Arnold also talked about just the the um, the move from Seth Luttrell to Kevin Johns, and, and I think yeah. he spoke more confidently about where his role is in the offense because of what Kevin Johns has been able to do for him over the last few weeks. 
Yeah, as the the quarterback coach, Kevin Johns, he said he, that initially he didn't want to step on any toes, and you know he he would help, but he wouldn't really be as hands on. And now he's fully hands on, and it, it, he can tell the difference in that. It helps him with his confidence and everything at the position, which makes sense when you got a young quarterback, you've got to be always hands on, and at the same time. You got to understand that he's going to be able to make some changes out there and make some adjustments, which I'm proud of Jackson Arnold. He's 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 done a lot better in recognizing defenses. I mean, we talked about it the first week of the season. He made a change to the play and threw the ball to uh, Deion Burks for a touchdown, and that was all you know on Jackson Arnold. He saw what the defense was giving him. He made an adjustment, and boom, the route changed. And there you go. There's a touchdown, and he did that similarly with the Brennan Thompson deep touchdown. You could see him look to the side. It looked like there there's, there's something with the defense. He made an adjustment. Boom. Next thing you know, Brennan Thompson's deep for a touchdown. So the good thing is that Jackson Arnold is – the confidence is now there for him. And then getting back those wide receivers is going to do nothing but boost his confidence because I don't think people understand when you're used to throwing the dudes, you know where they're going to be in the way that they pace. It makes it a lot easier for you to make plays. I mean, he was throwing it, launching it to, to Jaleel Farouk in, against Arizona in the bowl game. And so – I expect to see a lot more. And now that Burks is back, I expect to see even more. It's just that now we've got to figure out ways to get the young guys up to speed a lot faster. Uh, but the good thing is that they get to watch these veterans move in practice and watch them move in the game. And they can recognize, ah, so that's the adjustment I need to make on that route. Oh, that's the way I need to change things. Oh, that's the movement I need to make when my quarterback's in trouble. I always stay moving. And that's something that Jackson Arnold's going to get back now that he's get those two. He's potentially getting those wide receivers back against Missouri. Yeah, and if they are back, that gives you a wide receiver trio that's likely going to be J.J. Hester, Deion Burks, and Jaleel Farouk potentially starting for you this week. Ooh, I mean, I'd, I'd throw them back nice. into the starting lineup. If they're ready to roll, you're you're running out there with the first team. I Listen, um, no disrespect to Jacob Jordan. You've played great, but you don't have the dynamic ability that Deion Burks has. Now, you have the ability to get open. You're going to yeah. continue to get playing time. Oh, yeah. But if Deion Burks is ready, he's going back into the lineup. If Jalil Farouk is ready, he's going back into the lineup. And Jackson Arnold is going to play with much more confidence with those guys on the field. You go four wide, Jacob Jordan, you're my first wide receiver off the bench. You're going right there into that other slot spot opposite of Deion Burke. So, it, listen, I, I'm, I'm going to try not to get too overhyped or too overexcited about it until I see these guys on the field. But you listen to Jackson Arnold talk, and he talks like they're going to be back and they're going to be available. And you hear the, the confidence in what he says – and the, almost the relief in what he says. About yeah, he sounds relieved. And listen, we've talked about it before. Nobody's going to make excuses for Oklahoma on the injury front. Nobody's going to feel sorry for him. But it does make a difference. When you have the guys that you're expecting to have on your offense with the first team, it makes a difference for everybody. It gives everybody a little bit of a boost. And so it's an exciting potential development that comes this Saturday as Oklahoma makes the trip to Missouri. What did Brent Venable say about this Missouri game? We'll discuss coming up next here on Locked On Soon. 